Hello, this is Andrew with Missing Remote, and today we are going to walk through how to set up a WireGuard VPN server and mobile client device that connects to it. Here we have an Ubuntu 20.04 LCS server. Uh, I would re really recommend using something like Ubuntu 20 because the WireGuard setup is quite a bit easier to, to, to do in um, Ubuntu 20. But you can do, it should work pretty much the same on most modern Linux distributions. But we're just going to walk through it on Ubuntu. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is get our interface. We're going to need this later when we set up some uh, forwarding rules. And in this case, the interface that this machine is listening on is ETH0. It could be quite a few different things depending on how these server is configured. This is a virtual machine, so that's one of the reasons why it says ETH0 instead of something a little different if you were running on hardware, on actual hardware. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to escalate privilege because I'm lazy. If you really want to type sudo in front of everything that we do from now on, you are certainly welcome to do that. First thing we're going to do is run an app to update just to make sure that everything is up to date on the box. It should be pretty close because I did this yesterday. Before getting too far into this, I probably should note that all of these commands I'm going to put in a f on the site, so you could just get them from there instead of having to quickly type them out from watching the video. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to app install WireGuard, the WireGuard, WireGuard tools, and then also a utility called QR Encode. The next step is to create a private and public key pair for our server. And you use the WGG gen key and pub key utility to do that. This value here that just got put out on the screen, it should be the public key. Um, you have to be pretty careful about showing off your private keys. Public keys don't matter. But we're going to go ahead and look at them. Um, I'm, I'm going to show them to you so they know what they look like. Um, these will not be my production public or private key, but I'm not going to obfuscate them just so you can see what they look like and know where they go. So what I'm doing here is I'm just copying this value into Notepad so that I, I have it for later because I'm going to need it for when I set up my server configuration files. But I'm just going to move this off screen so that it doesn't get in the way. So I'm going to exit go to our public key and do exactly the same thing. Just highlight it, right click into our notepad and select paste. And then we get both public private key up top and the public key down bottom. We want to do the same thing, which is great, you know, public and private key pairs for our mobile device. I'm just naming it Android because I'm using an Android device, but it doesn't really matter what you name them. So here's our file again, server private key, server public key, mobile private key, mobile public key. Now we need to create our configuration file, which we're calling, I probably should have done that a little slower there. Let's try that again. Nano ETC WireGuard WG0.conf. And this means something, but we'll talk about that in a second. The name of the file means something, but we'll talk about that in a second. What we need to do now is paste in our configuration for the server. And we're going to start at the top just so that it's clear what we're doing here. First, we define the interface that the server will bind itself to, which in this case is the 10.220.1 slash 24 IP4 space and the bunch of gibberish IPv6 space. What's critical here is that you use, that you enable the IPv6 uh, binding because many mobile providers, like I, I use uh, T-Mobile or actually Mint, which resells T-Mobile service, they only give you an IPv6 IP address 
So if you don't set up IPv6 on the server, it won't work. You just, you'll be able to connect to the VPN, but it won't uh, actually route or send any traffic through. So that's super important. This is the port that your VPN listens on. Um, 51.8.20 is the default port. Some people might feel differently about leaving it at the default port, but that's beyond the scope of what we're doing here. We put in the private key that we had from before, this is for the server, in the private keys section here. We have some IP table rules where we need to put the interface we found out before from running IP space address and in the, you remember, in this case, it was ETH0 for me. You need to put that anywhere where you see the ETH0 if it was not ETH0. What these do is they create NAT and masquerading rules so that traffic that comes into the WireGuard server goes out to the right place. This one is the setup command, and this is the teardown command. So basically, they create a series of rules, and the other one takes them away. In the peer section, you have the public key of our mobile device here in the public key, and then we assign it both an IPv4 and IPv6 address. If you have multiple peers, you would have multiple peer sections in this file. So we're done with this. We're going to save this. And the next step is to just secure this file a little bit and those private and public keys, which is to show them and schmod them so that you need to have root access in order to read the, read the files. The next step is to enable IP forwarding. So we're going to open up etc forward slash sysctl.conf and we're going to add two lines to the end of the file here. The first one forwards IPv4 traffic, the second one forwards IPv6 traffic. I don't use IPv6 addresses internally on my network yet, but I'm just having it there for completeness. So we're going to save that file, and now we are going to apply those changes with sysctl space hyphen p. We can enable our WireGuard service, and you'll note here that the wg0, that needs to be the same as the name of the comp file that we named, that we created just a step or two before. So we make it, we, we turn on the server, or we make the service a service, and then we start it. Now we can run a command called wg show, and it will basically tell us what's going on with our service, which is we have an interface, which is the name of that file. We have our public key, the private key is hidden, the port that it's listening on, and then the peers that are allowed to connect and what IPs are given to them. We can also see that we have another, a new interface here, this WG interface, and it is bound to the IP space that we gave it in the configuration file. The next step is to create our configuration file for our mobile device. Now, this isn't the only way you can do it. You can certainly do it directly on your mobile device. I think it's easier to do it here because it's easier to type on a computer than it is to type on a mobile device. But you do need to have access to the box in order to make this work. So that is you know, something you just need to decide. So in our configuration file here, again, starting at the top, we have the private key for our mobile device. We have the address that we're assigning to it, and this needs to match what was in the server's configuration file. So we have our IPv4 address and our IPv6 address, and then we've given it a DNS value. This is a local DNS server that it sits on our network, but it can. this could be a public, IP, a public DNS service like Google's the 8.8.8.8 .8 or the 4.9's, quad 9's DNS server. It just needs to be populated. Then we put our public key for our server in the peer and the public IP address of our server plus the port that we defined for our WireGuard uh, interface to listen on. The allowed IPs, this, the way that I have it set up here is that everything will pass over 
it's a VPN connection. If you want to just do specific subnets, you would replace these values with just those subnets. But that's that's a little that's beyond the scope of what we're trying to do here. We're just trying to set up a VPN connection between a mobile device and your network, so that your the traffic from your mobile device routes over your um, your over the internet to your network and then out again. So we're going to save this, and now we are going to run use that QR encode utility to create a QR uh, QR code that makes it super easy to add this VPN connection to our mobile device. This should be very similar whether it is Android or iOS. But basically you just make sure that you get your QR encode in there and we are almost good to go. The last step that we need to do is create a port forwarding rule. So I use Unify on my network here and for Unify, you would just go to uh, the settings section for your controller, routing and firewall, port forwarding, and then create the rule with the port that we talked about before, and the IP address, the internal IP address of the uh, server, the Ubuntu server that hosts the VPN, and then make sure that you save it. If you're using a different home networking product like Netgear, D-Link, whatever, all of those products, er or every uh, router that I've ever come across has the ability to do port forwarding. If it doesn't, you should probably get a new router. Uh, but you just set it up. Similar to this, where you just want to po uh, forward this port to whatever the IP address of the box that you're using. You only want to do UDP because WireGuard is only UDP. And then you save it, and once that applies, we can go to our mobile device and we can enable the connection. And if we look at the logs, we can see that we have a connection here. And we can also run WG space show. And now we can start seeing that we have data flowing across the, the uh, VPN connection. So let's go and actually test this thing. So I have Terminus set up, which is an SSH client on my phone. And I have my USG set up on here and we can see that I can connect an SSH into the USG which is on my network so this WireGuard VPN is all set up and running and so I hope I hope you agree that that was pretty easy to set up and WireGuard has quite a few advantages over IPsec one of them is that it's pretty easy to configure it and it's supposed to be uh, quite a bit quicker faster as well so hopefully you found that useful. Um, if you did, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, I missed something, or you want to holler at me about my lack of networking expertise, drop it below. Cheers.